From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. David Parsons. Did you read the morning paper? Yep. It's spread all over them. My son missing. I've had calls from New York all morning long. The business merger's jeopardized, and it's your doing. Anything else to say? When I finish with you and your liability company, there won't be enough left to burn for junk. Mr. Parsons, before you shoot off any more steam, do you want me to give the papers the other half of the story? The one about you arranging for people to impersonate your son and his wife? Are you threatening me? I guess I am. Why, you... Why? Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Eastern Casualty and Trust Company, Boston, Massachusetts. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Calicles matter. Item 11, 10 cents, one newspaper. I lied to Parsons about seeing the paper. I hadn't seen it at all. But I could guess what had happened when they got hold of the story that a prominent broker had been missing some 14 days. It was all there, spread over the front page. I waited a couple of hours before I took old man Parsons on again. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? You should have given this matter to the police in the first place. I gave it to a detective agency. And what do you mean by firing them? Oh, they were just spending your money. And you're losing it for me with all this in the paper. I'm still trying to find your son, Mr. Parsons, remember? You aren't going to find him here. Something's come up. Maybe you can explain it. The DA's office impounded the books yesterday. $5,000 was withdrawn from your son's personal account. What do I have to explain about that? Wait. It was taken out the morning he disappeared. Do you have any idea why he'd withdraw a sum of money that size? No. Do you? Sure. Somebody could have been standing in back of him with a gun, threatening to blow his head off. He might have had a date to go to a wedding and needed some tip money. What can you add? <laughs> You're getting mad, Dollar. Go find your answers someplace else. You don't care if he's ever located, do you? Dollar, let me tell you something. My son means that to me. No more. He's never had brains enough or energy enough to do anything by himself. I do everything, always have. The only reason I want him back is to affect the merger with Little and Tennyson. You knew that right away. I suppose so. I just wanted to hear it said to believe it. Well, now you've heard me say it. <laughs> you know, one reason why I always run the show, Dollar, my face never looks like yours over anything. I got out of there fast. I went downtown with a tall policeman named Jerry Engel to interview a bank teller. I'm Sergeant Engel. It's Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes, you phoned me. It's about Mr. Parsons. You took care of him when he came in here last Tuesday a week ago, is that right? I handled the withdrawal, yes. We'd like to see the slip on that, please. Yes, I, I looked it up. I have it ready for you. Have you known Mr. Parsons very long? Well, I don't know him well, really. Look at this picture. This man is the same who signed the withdrawal slip last Tuesday morning? Yes, that's Mr. Parsons. Okay, tell us what happened. Well, he just came up to the cage and handed me the withdrawal slip, that's all. I see. Weren't you a little surprised when he made out a withdrawal slip for $5,000? That's a lot of money. Well, maybe I was a little surprised, but Mr. Parsons has withdrawn large sums from his personal account several times. I always assumed it was some sort of speculation where he needed cash on hand. When he came up to the cage to you, what exactly did he say? Oh, just good morning or, or something like that, and then will you please take care of this? Didn't he stipulate how he wanted the money? Oh, yes, yes, he did say that. I'm sorry. He took it mostly in hundreds and fifties. Any of these bills happen to be recorded? No, Sergeant. Uh -huh. Anything else you can remember about the transaction that might help? Mm, sorry, nothing. Well, well, maybe. Yeah? Well, you both know the kind of business Mr. Parsons is in. I mean, well, it seems like a hurried sort of business. Always phone calls, rushing, and so on. He was always always like that, it seemed to me. He'd come in here, do what he had to do, and rush out. Very brisk, you know. But that morning, he didn't seem in a hurry at all when he left. I mean, I had the distinct feeling that Mr. Parsons didn't particularly care in what direction he went. A recheck with Mrs. Parsons and the house servants established that Parsons had not left the house with the described money bag. The police went to work on that angle, trying to find out where he had purchased it. A supplementary bulletin went out with the news about the bag. The district attorney's men were trying to find out if he was involved with another woman, and if so, who. Parsons was reported to be in Toledo, Detroit, the Virgin Islands, and Boston. All the reports were untrue. 
Yeah, officer, that's him. That's the guy who was in here that night. You sure? Well, I'm positive that's his picture. Was he with anybody? Yeah, he was all alone. He sat over there on that stool. How long was he here? Oh, he's here till we closed the joint. Did you happen to see where he went from here? No. Now, what kind of shape was he in? Drunk? No, no, he was real sober and quiet. Drank all night, but he seemed to hold his stuff okay. Did you talk to him at all? No, just took his order for drinks. He didn't seem to want to talk to anybody. I see. Did you happen to notice if anybody who was in here went over and talked to him? I think a couple of people tried. You know, you get that sort of thing in a joint like this. But he didn't say much to any of them, so they just left him alone. He just sat alone and drank? No, he was making a phone call all the time. He was here, a long-distance call from the booth over there. He sat at the end of the bar so he could hear the phone ring. How do you know he was making a long-distance call? Well, he handed me a 20 once and asked me to change it to quarters for him. All the quarters I had. About what time was this? Oh, I don't know exactly, but it, it took him two or three hours anyway. Do you know if he ever completed his call? He poured a lot of dough into the phone. I guess he did, finally. Did he have anything with him while he was here? What do you mean? Was he carrying a little black bag, maybe? No, nothing but his overcoat. I... Yeah. What? He did say something to me at that. Uh, he asked me if I knew Callicles. Callicles? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Uh, he was about three bourbons along by then. Mean anything? I've heard about that before, Jerry. Callicles was a Greek... Parsons quoted him to his doctor once, something about a man breaking through and shaking off his chains. A pretty piece of poetry. Poet? I thought he was a bookie. Oh, excuse me. Well, Jerry, one thing for sure. Yeah, what? We know he was alive that night. Jerry Engel started a check with a telephone company. Their records disclosed that David Parsons had placed a call from the pay booth in the bar on the night in question. It had been a person-to-person -person call to a Kenneth Temple in San Francisco. We tried to place a call to the same number, but there was no answer. We waited another two hours trying to complete the call, and the operators were still trying when we drove out to the Parsons residence once more. Mrs. Parsons gave us a cool greeting. I certainly don't appreciate any of this. You're responsible, Mr. Dollar, for all this publicity. We don't have to go into that, Mrs. Parsons. We need your help now. We found out that your husband called a man named Kenneth Temple in San Francisco the night he disappeared. Oh? That name, Kenneth Temple, does it mean anything to you? No, I've never heard it before. Mr. Parsons never mentioned it to you? Well, I can't say for certain, but it's not familiar to me at the moment. Have you ever been to San Francisco? Yes. When? Twice. Going to and coming back from Hawaii two years ago. Has Mr. Parsons ever been in San Francisco? He was on the same trip. This name, Temple, maybe it was someone you met while you were there. No, I don't recall meeting anyone there at all. Sergeant. Yes? All this has been quite upsetting, quite nerve-wracking, really. I don't know what progress you people are making, but I do wish it would all be handled soon. I... Excuse me, please. Sure. Well, this isn't getting us very far. I don't get it. Hello? Who? Oh, oh, oh yes, operator, just a moment. It's for you, Sergeant. Oh, thanks. Probably San Francisco operator. Thank you. This is Sergeant Engel. Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Temple. This is Sergeant Engel, Missing Persons Division, Los Angeles Police. Uh, we're trying to locate a man named David Parsons. Huh? All right. He's there now. Huh? He's going to put him on. David? Well, let me talk to him. Uh, just a minute. Is that an extension? Oh, well, yes. Please. I'll get it. Let me talk. Hold it a minute. Mr. Parsons? I've been pretty worried about you. Yes. Yes, she's all right. She's right here. Okay, Mrs. Parsons. Here, take it. David? How are you? Oh, it's so good to hear your voice, David. When are you coming home? Your father and I have been... I read about it in the papers. Now, I want you to listen to me, Dorothy. Dad's going to ask you, so listen. But... I... Listen to me. I'm listening, David. Do you remember all the times that I've asked you to talk to me? The times during these years when I've wanted companionship, warmth, a, a home that was lived in? Each time I asked for these things, you were always too busy, too taken up with things outside my life. Do you remember all that? Oh, yes, yes, David, I remember all that. Well, this is the end of you and me. But your father... It's he... the end of father and me, too, Dorothy. You tell him that. He probably won't believe it, but you tell him the merger is all his. He'll have to get another figurehead. Oh, you'd be so angry. Dorothy. What I'm trying to say is his anger doesn't worry me anymore. Oh, what about me? <laughs> I never worried you. 
But, David... I'm going away. A long sea voyage with Temple. You don't remember him, but he was a sailor I used to talk to aboard ship when we went to Hawaii. He has a boat now. I'm shipping on it. Well, when will you be back? I won't be back. David! Now, will you put that police officer on? Hello, Mr. Parsons. Uh, Who's that? My name's Johnny Dollar. I've been trying to find you for two weeks. I'm an insurance investigator. Oh. I found out quite a lot about you... I want to make sure I'm talking to the right man. I won't answer a lot of questions. Just one. That's not even a question. Callicles. Oh. Mean anything? I don't know who you are. I didn't even get your name, but you did find out. (laughs) If there were a man who had sufficient force, he would shake off and break through and escape from all this. He would trample underfoot all our formulas and spells and charms and all our laws which are against nature. The slave would rise in rebellion and be lord over us. So far as the police were concerned, there was nothing more to do. So far as the insurance company is concerned, we'll have to sit on a $100,000 bond and hope that David Parsons will return to his life in Los Angeles when he gets whatever it is out of his system. Expense account total, $1,100.59. Remarks? Just Mrs. Parsons, to me. She asked why he never talked about this to her. I told her he did. No one ever listened. She didn't understand that either. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, one of the most heartless, most vicious rackets an insurance investigator ever had to face. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Virginia Gregg, Harry Bartell, Lillian Bayef, Will Wright, Gene Bates, Carlton Young, Lawrence Dobkin, Bert Holland, Marvin Miller, and Herb Vigran. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.